Hello YouTube, my name is Sean Chandler. Uh, I'm going to do a video on how to convert your DC stick welder into a scratch arc TIG welder. Uh, TIG welders are a lot of money. Um, if you're not sure if it's for you or you're just trying to learn and practice, um, you can maybe take what you already have um, and use that to figure out if you want to go spend big bucks on an actual TIG welder with high frequency and all that stuff. So I'm going to do a video. Um, we'll go through the finer points of it. It's pretty straightforward, um, but let's start. So first, um, this isn't your standard run-of-the-mill stick welder. This doesn't plug into a wall. It's a gas-powered generator welder. Um, I use this mostly for backup power generation. Um, I haven't really done a lot of welding with it, but I figured I would do the video with this. It doesn't really matter that it's a gas-powered welder. Uh, all that it really matters is that it's got a positive and a negative and we can set it up as a stick welder. Aside from that, it doesn't matter if it plugs into a wall, it doesn't matter if it's 100 years old, it just needs to be a DC power source, constant current. So first we have to hook up the cables to the machine. Um, if you've been stick welding with that machine, you're used to a certain polarity. We're going to change that polarity which means we're gonna change it from electrode positive when you stick weld to electrode negative for TIG weld. So we've got our connections to the machine made. Uh, we have our positive cable, which goes to our ground clamp. And we've got our negative cable, which goes to our stinger, which would normally hold your electrode if you were stick weld. So this polarity should be opposite what you would normally hook up to stick well. Doesn't mean it's always the case. Okay, so what else do we need? Um, we need a bottle of gas. This is straight argon. You could also use helium, but helium is quite expensive and would have some benefits, but you, you don't really need helium. So argon is great and it's the most affordable of the inert gases. Uh, we need a gas line to come out of our regulator. Uh, we need a regulator or flow meter. And this is the torch whip. So inside this, there is a current carrying cable. Um, and there's also a path for our inert gas to go to the torch. So the torch goes on one end and the other end goes back to our welder and our gas source. Okay. So these are the items that are mostly just used for the scratch arc rig setup. We have an adapter, which I'll show you what that does in a minute, but the gas line, gas source goes in one side and the torch goes out the other side, and then I'll show you what this hole's for. You need a bolt, a couple washers, and a nut. Um, this happens to be a quarter 20 bolt, uh, which we'll be putting into that large hole, and you'll see why shortly. And you need a TIG torch. So this particular TIG torch has a gas valve on the back side of it, um, by opening and closing this, it turns your gas on and off. Because you don't have a gas solenoid in the welder that you're using, because it's an old stick welder potentially, um, you need to have a way to turn the gas on and off. Okay? The torch itself is uh, this little piece here. If I take off this other stuff, which you can of course use down the road. I can explain what this stuff is after. So this is the torch itself. Um, if you take the back off, there's a little threaded portion, um, goes into the torch, gas comes in here, power comes in here. That's your on and off, and that's your torch. There's not a lot to it really. It's the handle and the torch. This other stuff here, you've got a tungsten, because it's tungsten inert gas welding. Got an adapter. This is a gas lens. Um, really important that you use a, a good gas lens when you're TIG welding. Don't use the, the junky um, little collet, body, collet bodies with three holes in the top of them. They're not very good. You need a collet, you need a gas cup, and you need a backing cap. Yours could be shorter than this, but they all look the same pretty much. 
Okay, so here's your torch. Here's your gas line. We want to connect them. Take your handle, slip it over top, thread this on. I'm not going to do the actual tightening of that connection. I'll do that off camera. And then you've got your gas and power into your torch. The other side of the torch is where this comes in. Now this is a Miller Weldcraft adapter. So one end goes into this adapter. Okay, so that means to my torch, I have uh, this, this brass block where gas can pass through it and power can enter it through this hole. The hole, you just put a bolt and a couple washers into there. Once again, I won't tighten this on camera, but... So you've got this bolt that goes into that large hole, and then you've got your gas line that goes to your bottle and regulator goes into here. So we've got gas coming in, power's gonna come in via this bolt, and I'll show you how that works. Everything comes together here and travels to the torch. So I'll tighten this all up and then I'll show you what it looks like. So let's go through again what we've got here. We've got a regulator hooked up to a gas line. This goes onto your bottle. Then we have the adapter block where the gas line goes into it. A bolt comes out of it. A lot of guys will grind the threads off so it fits better into the electrode holder, which I'll show you in a minute. Mine fits so I don't have to grind it down. Um, and then the torch, which goes into the block as well, is fed over to that. So all these connections need to be tight and leak free. So you check them with the leak detector. Make your own with soap and water, buy a pre-made one, it's up to you. Um, and then, like I said, on the other end you have your torch, which needs to have a gas valve to turn it on and off. So here we are, back at the welder. Um, elephant in the room, uh, unsecured gas bottle, not a really great idea. I don't really have anywhere to secure it right now, so we're just going to be careful. Um, we have our regulator on top of the bottle, gas line coming out of the regulator, going to our adapter block, and then we have our stringer or electrode holder, whatever you want to call it. So there's the quarter inch bolt, and we take our stringer electrode holder and loosen it as much as we can, and then we tighten it until there really, really well connected. Uh, by grinding the threads off the bolt, you get a better surface area contact, a better connection. I haven't done that on that bolt. Um, so there we have it. We have the adapter block, stinger or electrode holder, gas line to the bottle, gas line to the torch. Then if we start our welder up. We could do scratch arc TIG and I'll do another addition to this showing you how this all works. Okay, so you should be able to hear welder running outside. I got my torch and we got our gas valve on the back here. So we just crack the valve to get gas. So I'm just gonna show you the motion. It's kind of a quick strike. You don't wanna spend a lot of time trying to drag it across the surface. It's gonna stick and it's gonna leave tungsten inclusions in your material. So I broke it off really fast and then I came back in tight to allow gas to flow over top of the weld and over the end of my wire 
and you can see there because I use the gas lens it's it's pretty clean and there we have it uh, finished TIG weld uh, this is a piece of stainless steel that I happen to have sitting around um, so it's got a nice clean kind of gold blue silver color to it I just want to show you uh, a different method of hooking everything up to our welder. So if you take the Miller Weldcraft uh, adapter block and you remove your quick connect on your negative, you can then hook up the adapter directly to the terminal on the welder. It just gets uh, gets you a little bit closer to the machine with the TIG welding setup. So for me, it wouldn't really work because this is gas driven. So this can be outside with longer cables. So um, one last little piece of information that might help, um, kind of safety related. If by chance, while you have your welder turned on, the ground or your work came in contact with this block, um, you would get a short circuit. So something you could do is take a leather welding jacket, wrap it around it. You could tape it up in some way. Um, that is sort of a problem with this setup is that you have this live open connection out there that you wanna be really cautious of. So make sure you protect yourself and stay safe. If you have any questions, uh, please put them down below. Um, subscribe. Thank you.